sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, can, you, can you guys hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so, Michelle? Yeah, I'm here. Michelle? I'm here. Hello? Hello? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. So, there's a, so, I think this is what Dan is referring to. So, there's a, there's a hearing on 9-15-2014 related to the divorce. When it shows Metzen's Metson's name, all of a sudden you see her on there. I, I don't have it in front of me at all. But it, it, all of a sudden you see Metzen showing up that there was a hearing and this and that. That was not anything to do with my divorce. Okay, yeah. I, I mean, my understanding, yeah, because 9 15, 2014, I don't think you had it. You guys, you, you would have had any hearings related to your divorce in 2014, would you? No. It was September of 2014 in front of Judge Methman? Yeah, I was never in front of her. Whether it did nothing related to my divorce, it was, again, all Michelle related. So we didn't even show related, like, this is the uh, traffic stuff, or...? Michelle related, meaning, I, um, Michelle, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe it was related to the arrest. I think you're saying. No, no. Here's here's the the skinny, um, and I think you were in the courtroom um, because me. No, I not you, Michael. Oh. Michael was in the courtroom. I um, all of a sudden I'm I'm defending myself, <laughs> you know, in, in a criminal proceeding. You know, Metzen's the judge, and all of a sudden sh it's scheduled. Uh, in, in Sandra's divorce case, I have the, I think I uh, either took a picture or grabbed the, um, I didn't take a picture, I grabbed, at that point I couldn't, I grabbed the, uh, the calendar, and I, I go there for my trial, and I look in there's Sandra grazzini Rocky case, and then it's my, tr my trial. And I'm like, what the hell is this? And Metzen was just uh, 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 presiding over, all of a sudden, Sandra's case. But it wasn't a case. But, but at the bottom of the, kind of the document, they're saying on 4 2015 so just yesterday, yeah. there was a notice of, notice of filing of order. Is that Knutson being bumped? Yes. Correct. And they call it an order. Isn't that interesting? Doc ID number 58. And so, okay. This is bizarre. Okay. It's been bizarre all along. Okay. Did you, so, I mean, there, when was the last time, Sandra, you were in court related to your divorce? Like there was like something, not not anything Michelle related, but just like you were there in a manner related. It would show that though, um, Knutson. So it would. I, I, I could, so whatever be, date it shows that Knutson was on it or issued an order. So it, it would have been in 2014 fall. So August of 2014. Is that what, I, I don't have it in front of me, Michael, I'm sorry. Is that what Knutson's name is on it? No, I think the last time you were before Knutson was, um, was the trial. You were never before Knutson after that. So that would be September 12th, 2013. 2013. 13. So if, the, so if the case, is, if the divorce is settled, the case is... is is in essence over related to the divorce. Why are they reassigning a judge? That's the million dollar question. And why are they assigning a retired judge, which per the, the, the rules, a retired judge is not to be used in that way, to be used sporadically as needed. Okay. And like I said, this was done in Carver and they removed a judge that was retired that tried to assert a case. He was originally on, and they would not allow that. He was originally on this girl's case. And even after he retired, he even tried to keep the same case he was on, and even that wasn't allowed. So the fact that they would take a judge that was never on the case, and I've never been in front of, and all of a sudden put her on, 
brings into the question of what is going on in Dakota County. It does. This is, this is a bit. Um, so Knutson's off the case. So Knutson, um, if this would have been done, if this would have been done, um, you know, a year ago, would it be less suspicious? After four years of attempting to have him removed, I would say it would be, they'd have more of a leg to stand on. But after we received the reply from the chief judge almost a year ago, saying a flat out letter again, denying it, and Knutson remained on it and continued to do orders, and it, would have, it was no longer an issue, we could not have him removed, we were already denied, and then they go to this extreme. What was the what, man, what was the judgment order on four seventeen two thousand fifteen? Oh, I don't even know of anything, Michelle. So there would be a, it, it, it says judgment, judicial officer David L. David David Kinson, judgment. So uh, four seventeen two thousand and fifteen. I, I I do not know what that is. Michael, I'm sure you know that there's many judgments and orders that do come out from Knutson, and me and Michelle are never notified of it. Yeah. So it wouldn't surprise me if more stuff comes out and we're never told. Oh, um, uh, Michelle, can you send me the, otherwise I gotta go to Dakota County right now, can you send me the, the what would be, I think it's the 420 order? That would be the fourth, which they're calling an order on I mean, this. Are they calling it an appellate judgment? They are calling it, uh, who did it they're calling it notice of filing of order, doc ID. If uh, you're at the county, you can look at it. Just open it up. I can't click that. It's not, I, I, you can do this. Are you at the courthouse? I think you should go to the no. courthouse and see for yourself. Because the men says you're not able to see it publicly. You just see, you know, what you're seeing, this this litany of registrars <laughs> stuff. But when you're at the When you're at the courthouse, you can actually you open can it up it and look. Okay. Right, I'll, 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 yeah, I, I can go down and, I mean, this, this And not to rush you, Michael, but there is a history of documents being misplaced and lost. So, hence, <laughs> to do it quickly... In my case, things tend to be, they just happen to disappear, so. The difference, the difference with Sandra, just so you know, that, that I recognized from the, you know, I didn't recognize till later in the game, is that, you know, she's an airline stewardess. So what she ends up doing is looking every day at the flights, and she, she looks, you know, it's a moving thing, it's a moving thing. She does the same thing with her court case. And she'd call me up and say, they just did an order. And I wouldn't even get notice of it. Um, you know, she, 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 she watches that like she watches, you know, the airlines because it's so, it's moving so much. So many times is what you're saying is I have been informed of an order or I have seen it myself. I've contacted Michelle and we are both on the email or the e-file, both her and me. And yet... We are not e-filed in. And numerous times we have gone back and said, why is everybody being e-filed and you have our two emails and yet we're never informed of anything? We're not emailed for some reason. Sorry. You guys are allowed to be e-filed because you are parties to the case, correct? Correct. Got it, okay. So this notice that you received, somebody, somebody sent it to you, obviously. What notice? Yes, yeah, I got it. Um, I got it e-filed yesterday and okay. printed it off. Okay. I mean, I, I think it has to be connected to the. I think it has to be connected to the, the story. It has to be. It has to be. No question. Uh, because they're getting okay. calls from Brandon, you know, and I think in the story, Knudsen had no comment. All he did was throw out his orders, you know. Here's what I have to say. It's in my order, you know. Okay. 
What? Um, okay, so I'll, I'll go down. Can I leave you? Can you leave me? No, please. I don't know. I'll, I already have it said. I told my uh, paralegal to email you the, the, the two things we got yesterday. I didn't realize till Sandra told me they were dated on fr one of them was dated on Friday anyway. But I, I think that it could be backdated. I don't think they s they sat there on Friday. Well, if this if but you gotta you gotta back it up though. The date on the story was April eighteenth. Saturday. Two thousand and sixteen. Right. And so uh there's a lead time of a couple days on the story. And so, obviously, they knew. I mean, the timing of this is not, it's not, a, it's not a coincidence. The timing, the, the two things are connected. Absolutely. I agree. Yeah, but I, from, yeah. Okay, so, is the, is the first, um, the getting, then, going down with what, what do you think, um, who from uh, who from the court should comment? I mean, what's your what's your take on who to comment from the court? Knutson again after the the order that he had made it so clear. Remember, Michael, I was originally divorced by a woman, and when they they tried to reopen it, we specifically requested the original judge on there, Warminger, to be put back on it. He was the original judge. We were denied. Okay. Now, the fact that Knutson has used his orders to assert cases in Scott County and other cases that I had, as well as cases of the state of Minnesota against David Ruppey in criminal cases that were non-related to me, example, his first degree assault and battery in June of 2014. My ex-husband was um, picked up for road rage. He put a man in the hospital. That had no relation to me. Yeah, if you look him up, Michael, just in Dakota County, look up David Ruckey, and you'll see um, all of, I think there's 20-something. Uh, no, I, I, they're erasing them. Oh, they are? Okay. Yes, and, and remember, there's three letters from the Lakeville Police Department going to the court asking them to dismiss criminal charges which I find that to be weird. They were hidden. Um, I think there were two, to be exact. There's three. There's three? Okay. There's three letters separate. They letters. were hidden. I just came across them because I went down there like, like, like you can do. Um, and just be, you know, I spent three days down there. And then when um, I spent... You know, all because I wasn't getting the 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 information as her attorney. I was not getting anything. <laughs> the you know a lot of this materials. So I'm I'm trying to piece together. You know these 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 things again. I didn't even get the uh, final custody order. She was already divorced in May of 2000. 11. I didn't even get the, the final custody order again until it was attached to his motion to dismiss in the federal case. He attached it as an exhibit. Like, I'm a judge. I have immunities. Here's what I did. Look, look, see, I was a presiding judge. You know, and, and, it, and that's what uh, clinched the dismissal, which that's is now in Eighth Circuit. The custody. Was the only thing we found out about the custody order was because Knutson submitted it as evidence. It was never given to us until after the fact that there was already submitted to the courts. And these orders you're supposed to have, um, they're supposed to be entered and you're supposed to have 30 days. They just enter them and, and they're, um, you're supposed to have 30 days to be able to mull it over, you know, in any other realm. This is the way it works. <laughs> you know, it, it's just stayed for 30 days and then in, in the 30th day, so you get an extra 30 days to appeal and all of this, you know, sorted out and, and that hasn't happened in Sanders' case ever. The, the, the order that, uh, um, and again, she was, you know, September 7th was the order uh, after a phone conference. No paperwork, no motion papers, no pleadings, no nothing. After a phone conference, 
um, 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 you know, and she just got a call from her attorney. And I, like I told you, Sandra's like a saint. She does what she's told. She just doesn't know where, where to turn, you know, in this case. Cause she, she'll, so she, she left with a suitcase, which she had done, you know, countless times as a um, stewardess. She took her I stewardess told suitcase. Her it was one hour or eight or they didn't say anything. I didn't know if I was going out for more. They just said you can take your airline suitcase because the airline owned it. That's it. Nothing else could be taken, but they never said. Okay, I'm getting you. No, all my personal possessions found in my toothbrush was left. All my uniforms were left. And then Knut refused to allow me to even go in and pick up my ID, my uniform, my toothbrush, any, all my personal belongings were left. And this is a house she had lived in with the children for 14 years and owned solely. The, the divorce was over. She owned the home. Period. A week prior, a week prior, Knutson had awarded me that, that in our four homes, I was awarded the one home. Yeah, but you were awarded it originally anyway. Well, you owned it. I owned it. it. You didn't have to be awarded it a week prior. No. That's, that was just all bullshit. Bull crap. Yeah, but in any way, she she felt there's a, a, a transcript on August 28th, 2012, that 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 where they put a settlement on the record that she's going to get the home. You know, and and she you know okay good I have my home, uh, I have you know my property whatever was was granted, and then on September 5th they have a f telephone call. Um, uh, and 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 remove. You know, it's a new way of 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 child. You know, ch children. They remove the parent from the child, like in that video with uh, Baby Liberty. They removed her from her own home, all of her property, all of her files, all of her notes. You know, about everything that's gone on. She just had to leave it and 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 with a suitcase. And uh, or she'd be subject to arrest. This was a civil order that that Knutson signed. Which Michelle, I think it's important to point out that that order was not signed until after I was removed from the house. Right. I was to be gone by noon. The order had not even been signed, and yet uh, a phone call. The police had shown up, according to witnesses, to make sure I wasn't there. So the police were acting without even a, a document or an order. It had not been signed to That's the civil rights violation that I brought, you know, to... I apologize, I, I, I know this is it's probably difficult to talk about, but I, I just wanted to... So, and I, and I, and I hate to ask such a... Uh, but you were notified, so how were you told? And you, had, you were told on the phone? It wasn't an order that was signed? You were told on No, there was no order signed. I was simply given a phone call and told I could take a suitcase um, that the airline owned, which was not even, it was just a one flight bag, because it was owned by the airline, and that was it. Everything else must be left in the home. And then after I realized that this, this wasn't for an hour, and this was permanent, we tried to get back and at least get my personal property because I was ordered to continue flying. But I had no uniforms, no ID, no nothing. I mean, my you personal belongings. You couldn't fill up the suitcase. You could just take the suitcase, correct? I could take the suitcase. Jesus. Oh, God, that's a nightmare. You know, it's so so much of a nightmare that it's it's so remarkable. And I believe when Sandra came in and uh, January one two thousand thirteen, she came uh, to you know we have these socials every month for Family Innocence, and she came. And um, she was so scared. She didn't even trust me. She's like, why are you having these at uh, Carboni's? Here's where my husband, this is where my husband hangs out. And, and uh, of course, you know, my husband, Tom, and Tom was there. And, and we sat down with her. And we're like, you know, what's going on? <laughs> you know, she tells me about this. And I don't even believe her. And she meets with me on, on January 3rd. And I still don't believe her. <laughs> and I went down to the um, courthouse for three days and looked at the file. Hello? Sorry, Oh, okay. Michael, I, I, I'm sure you're aware of my, my situation to date. 
yes. that I still have zero property. I own nothing. I do work, but I receive no income from that job due to Kennington's orders. I have a telephone. I have a telephone conference with attorneys, um, so I need to to hang up. Can we resume this or or, or something? Can Sandra and I just? Just finish talking for a couple minutes, then okay? Um, sure, a couple minutes. I'll just try to multitask here. Okay, go ahead, Sandra. I'm sorry. I'm just saying, um, I am aware of what Brandon wrote, but I, I do think that you should be aware that I do not own a phone. I do not. I go from, I am working, obviously, and it is for free because I do not receive any of my checks, and I'm basically living from couch to couch. Well, I, and, and I want to, I want to just, well, let's just, I'm not, none of this is, I, you haven't told me that anything is on the record yet, so I'm just assuming that it's all in the background, so I'm not, I just, so. Yeah, it's just basically the background. I don't think that people realize how desolate they have left me. I own nothing. I have no place. Yeah, I don't hear anything. Where do you, you work for the airport? I work for American Airlines, yes, I'm a flight attendant. I've been there um, almost 30 years. Yeah. I don't know. This is tough. This is tough. This is tough. Oh, okay. Really tough. So she's hung up. So, so again, there was an issue you know, with sure Knudsen, which is an FAA issue, that okay. all my right. uniforms are true. I mean, you know how stringent things are. That he ordered me to work, but refused to allow me to even get my work related stuff back to the company and having issues with that this judge you just gave your ID, your uniform, this is serious. Please let me know what, what it, um, just so I, I kind of follow this. Do you, do you, do you travel right now? I mean, do you a flight attendant right now? I'm still employed by the airline. Okay. And basically, it, where I can find the sleep, who I can, who's able to feed me, I can use people's phones, and in my paychecks, I don't receive anything because due to Knutson's court orders. Because the amount that he's ordered me to pay is more than I make, so I have zero pay. What is the, where is the, what do you mean, your wages are garnished? Yeah, my wages are garnished to an amount, pardon? Where does that money go? Um, it goes to my ex-husband, and I'm also ordered to pay all the yeah. It goes to my ex-husband, and I'm supposed to cover all the insurance, but I don't make enough. The, the way they did it was they took um, my pay, and then I'm also supposed to pay all the insurance, so whatever is left for me is goes straight to the insurance to pay for that, because I'm ordered to do that, too. So in regards, I'm in the hole. So I'm now owing the company money, and they're running a tab on me. Jeez. So I'm getting farther in debt with the company, but I'm doing my best to try to go to work. But like I said, I have to get rides. I have to have a place to stay, sleep for the night and shower. I have no property. The company should not give me new uniforms because I have, when you get new uniforms, you have to pay for them for your, from your paycheck. Well, there's nothing left to pay for the replacement, so I'm giving other flight attendants uniforms and... I even paid her union dues because yeah, she was going to, they were going to, you know, I, I paid them up for a year or something, oh, Sandra. Because it was just, you know, something that had to be done for her to keep her job. Was it union dues that I paid? Yes, yeah, you had to pay the union dues, and then I'm back on the, um, I owe the FAA money for my license. You see the license, and uh, you have to have a license with, uh, with the FAA. I'm here. Yeah, we're licensed to them. Plus, oh, okay. you know, we go through all the All right, so we'll try to put this together later. Which I'm sure you're Sandra's aware of. talking they do with Michael Bradford, All the drug so and alcohol we'll tests, okay. which I've done for years, and have a completely perfect record. And there's never been an issue of anything. I've never had a problem with nothing. Not even in my work, in my work job related. Jesus, this is just horrible. Did you, did you see Brandon's story? Did you read Brandon's story? Yes, I did, and I, I am not happy about it. I mean, yeah, we're just, 
I, t I trust, uh, I just want to say, Sandra, I trust Michael. He wants to get the truth out, you know, so. But Brandon was well aware of the truth. And in my opinion, he twisted it. He implied things. He did not state the facts. And the, the facts are the facts of the, cr uh, the criminal record of my ex-husband, the issues with him. I mean, there's a lot of facts out there. I have tried to stay places. My ex-husband has continued to stalk me. This is documented when I've tried to stay in people's homes. And we have gone to court to try to get some type of protection from me. And Knutson has asserted those protections and dismissed them. I did have three orders of protection against me, or four of me, sorry, not against, and one for the protection of the children. Knutson dismissed, and they were signed by a, a judge, and Knutson went in there and dismissed them all. And these yeah. were contested protections, right? You actually testified and everything else. Yep, and they were awarded. And I don't know, Brandon, if this isn't, uh, Brandon, uh, Michael, this isn't just issues with me. These are also issues that neighbors had orders of protection or based on correct or restraining orders that they had filed against David. And he had violated those. So this isn't just issues with me and the children. He has, like I just said, back in June, he had a first-degree assault and battery, and it was dropped down to a disorderly. That man spent five days in the hospital. And it was a road rage. And he had, and, and he has custody of the kids. Correct. And you're not allowed to see him. Well, I did read that now they're stating that they are super highly supervised due to abduction. Now that is never, I, I, that's, I'm sorry, that's insane. They're, I'm sorry, they're highly supervised because of what? Because of I'm telling you what Brandon wrote, but that is not, well, they said they were supervised because they were fear of abduction. I've never heard that before, so I don't know where he got his information, but that is not written anywhere. They were, so, oh, so Brandon wrote that they were... The point is, Michael, I have not had any contact with my children except for one visit at the Mall of America. And there was and a Chunky was Cheese, too. You gotta remember oh, sorry that. for that, but Chunky Cheese. But that was back in 2013. I've been, I can't even send a card to them. I can't even have no contact with them. I did not know even where my three other children were because I have documents that stated after David received custody, the two smaller ones that he had in his custody, he signed over to state to be placed into foster care. That is the last I knew. Now, in Brandon's statement, or in his thing, he says that they're in David's custody. Now, that was the first... I have not known what any of my children are for all this time. It says my son's in college. Okay. And your son, so I think I've read, so I've read there's, there's two that are living with David, and then your son is in college, and then there's two that are um, still missing. Correct. Well, I don't know. I mean, I guess Brandon says they're with him. Did not know that. Have not. All I knew, and I saw the document where David signed over after he received custody of the children to the state of Minnesota to be placed into foster care. That was the last I knew. And it wasn't until his article that my ex husband is now stating that he has them. Didn't know that. Tell um, Michael what you learned about the medical that you, one of your kids was in um, mental health treatment and getting yeah. shock treatments yeah, or something to, like that. Yeah, prior to the divorce, my children had no issues. Even when they were in my care and my custody after the divorce for the next year, there was no mental health issues, there was no medicine, there was nothing needed. Since then, due to the fact I hold the insurance, we are being informed, and, they, and a lot of the documents are redacted, 
but it appears that they are on highly doses of psychotic medicine, psychiatric medicine. They are doing an extreme amount of um, therapy, um, shock treatments, and the company has questioned that what is all of a sudden this excessive amount of mental health that your children have never needed before, but are experiencing now. And you, so, so let me ask this, so the no contact order stays in place, you can't, you don't, you're not able to participate in any of the medical treatments involving any of your kids? No, I've been denied, um, due to tenants in September 7th order, I'm not even allowed to speak to my family members, I've not spoken to my neighbors, I've not spoken to anybody I previously knew prior to that date. I did make attempts to speak at least to the doctors that way in the beginning. They told me that I was not to be given any information. They would not take my calls. I tried to contact the school to see if they were even in school. They would not even tell me if they even attended that school. They told me that they had an order denying me from any and all information and refused to speak with me. I have made numerous attempts. Where does David, where does David currently live? Um, there's two homes. Um, he currently lives in the uh, Ireland Place property in Lakeville. He also has a home in Farmington. There's a home in Balsam Lake, and there's property in Orlando. These are all owned by him? All owned by him. Is it possible, I mean, is it, is it possible, is he keeping the girls away from you? Is it possible? Well, I think it would, it, it is a possibility because of the children did testify, um, the word testify is correct, about the abuse and about what was going on. It would, I, I can't say for sure, but I do know that if it came out, what he what they testified to and what they could say about him would be very damaging to David, so it, is, it would be an extreme risk for those kids to talk about what he had been doing. It will curtail all that Tennyson did trying to make David out to be this wonderful man. It will expose what was truly going on. So is that, is that, is that not an incentive? Is that not an incentive for, for him, for... For David to be to have the, to have the two girls. Yeah, I can only speculate that would be a huge incentive. Okay. Jesus, that's just unbelievable. <clears throat> um, Tell him about the red truck that you um, read about. Um, me and Michelle were never notified of the children being gone. They did hold a hearing in June of 2013. This hearing was specifically for me to be brought in and be questioned in front of the judge, an actual hearing regarding this. I spoke at that hearing. I testified at that hearing. They claimed that they had a red truck and it's a video and they had witnesses. Yet at that hearing, they said they could not, they didn't have anything. I mean, they didn't have they had it, but Knutson overruled and said they didn't have to produce it. It was simply off what David had said. Now, nobody I know owns a red truck. As you know, I own no vehicle. I've never owned a red truck. I don't know any. The only person that ever owned this red truck was David himself. He owned a red truck. Right after that hearing, when they made the claim of this red truck, David sold his red truck and purchased a maroon um, Tahoe or Suburban. But David also has nine other vehicles. So for him to share with the one red truck, it, it's just weird. But I'm just reading a surveillance video came from the neighbors so the girls brought into a red truck. Yes. And they never produced it. We asked about it at the, I call it a trial, but it was a hearing. Um, and Knudsen said that they didn't have to produce it. He simply was going by what he said. They didn't have to produce a witness. They didn't have to produce a video. Nothing. They never have. What about in the next paragraph, there's a statement from this Dale Nathan individual? Yeah, we chuckled on that. <laughs> what's, what's the deal with that? I have no idea. 
The, the point I'm trying to make that Sandra made for me is the only person that owned a red truck at this time was David Rucky. So why aren't they investigating the why, why did they stop investigating the red truck? I'm like if they have a surveillance can't they zoom in and get the exactly. get the you know why aren't we all looking for a red truck? <laughs> you know, why weren't we all looking for a red truck at the time? Well, David Rucky owned a red truck, and what happened was he sold it and bought a, on a different car. And remember, I know this is irrelevant, but the reason that the next-door neighbors did have surveillance cameras was because of Dave Rucky. They had a harassment and restraining order that um, they had in place. David did violate it. He went after the wife and her seven children. So he went to court again for violation of that, by the way. Knutson dismissed that. So their only protection was to put up surveillance cameras, which zoomed in directly on my house for the protection of them against David. So that is why they had surveillance cameras. But again, we nobody's ever seen them. Knutson said they didn't have to produce them. And the only person that had a red truck was Dave Ruffy. If that is so, if that's if that's what they're playing. So, there's a big possibility that 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 your that your your ex husband has the kids. Yes. And why, why do you think the police are investigating that? Well, could you explain why the police and and I do have a friend that's an officer, but not in Lakeville, and he found it to be very strange that a police department would. Three separate times, with drone and being the signature on both of them, asking the court to dismiss criminal charges. I would say there's some kind of a connection there. What do you think it is? Like I said, drone and signature is on one of them. He was the one that's requesting that um, a violation for an order of protection be dropped after the criminal act. <laughs> Well, there's another aspect to it, too, is that you, you told me that David, when you were married to him, would pay $5,000 any time he got a criminal-type uh, violation. And the one he did that was with the President Apple Valley, um, and it was a terroristic threat against um, a woman, her, ch her husband, and their three children, and it went in front of Sutherland. And that is what he paid. They went, his attorney went into his chambers, prior to the hearing with Sutherland, then came back out, and then I was there at the time, and then he said, it's all taken care of. And we walked into the, the, the court hearing, and the, the woman and her husband were there, and uh, Sutherland dismissed all charges. If you could from Lakeville? He grew up in... Uh, Southwest Minneapolis. We moved to Lakeville in approximately beginning of June of '98. Okay. It seems like he seems like he's got connections to the area or something like that. Um, it seems like he's, you know, um, connected. I mean, that's just the impression I'm getting from from, from talking with you is that. Um, that there's just the possibility of these, 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 because I didn't get that sentence, I mean, from reading this. There, he has a lot of connections in that city. I, I, I will state that. He has a, a very strange connection, <clears throat> that would be very accurate, with Michelle Roberts, who is an officer of Lakeville Police Department. We'll just say it's, it's a very close relationship. And she happens to be the signature on another request for a dismissal, as well as her being on four of the 22 ICRs that were reported against David. Um, what's, the, what's the most important thing that you think is missing from the story? The story. <laughs> The most important thing. Um, there's, there's, there's so many, Michael. There, there's so much. I, I think it needs to be out there. What's really going down? <clears throat> I mean, I, I 
the, the connections, the cover-ups, the corruption, all at the expense of my children. I mean, the number one thing here is my children. But I do, I, they're trying to spin it to such a degree, it's getting exposed. People are starting to question. The feedback I got on that article was, it didn't make Brandon look good because he, it appeared that he was trying so hard to make this man look out like a saint that something just wasn't right. And again, it's not, you know, what happens is the system keeps the parents fighting. You know, what, what bothered me about that is their divorce was over May 2011. And it was we had done. A parenting agreement we, between the two of us that had already been done and decided. We had worked out visitation and all that stuff between the two of us. Everything was done, and the fact that he came back and claimed it was a fake divorce. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And he only did that, Michael, you know, legally, because I went and looked. You'll see the first thing that that's in the file. And this is, this is a, a, a malpractice by Sandra's attorney. So Sandra, you know, was awarded the home, owned the home, you know, the divorce was over. And her attorney, because um, um, Sandra said, hey, you know, he keeps coming over here. And I think he, he that, that might be when he came over. Was it after the divorce and, and said he had a gun or he had a bullet for everybody? Was that in the kitchen? Um, but be, be that as it. But be that. Confirmation about Leslie Metzen. She is the chairman for the. She is the chairman? She's the chairman? Can you, can you send that to. Um. Chair for the Guardian Lab, so we actually got a document in front of us stating that that is an actual statement. I just want to make that point, sorry. What's the, what, 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 how does this resolve? What's, what's the, what's the, what's the resolution to this? How does this? I need my life back. I need my children's lives back. Um, I know this sounds far-fetched, but it's, it's factual, Michael. He threw me out on the street. And I had nothing, and I was told not to have contact with anybody I had previously known. Basically, it was an order of death by the swipe of a pen, because nobody could survive without a vehicle, no money, nowhere to go, and nobody to talk to. And I've been lucky enough to have people help me to survive this long. This needs to be exposed what's going on. And I need my life back. I can't keep living on people's couches and people giving me food and rides and letting me use their phone. My children need their mother. Okay. Um, you haven't seen your kids since when? This is over with time. You haven't seen them since? Um, 2013, approximately February. Yeah, and I, I sent Brandon, I was there at that, because she, she was, Sandra was afraid, okay? Um, it was a Mall of America um, visit, and she asked me to come, and so I went, you know, it, it's, it's kind of like Perry Mason, you don't often do this, but I came, um, and I took pictures, and I have the pictures, I have 19 of them, and I sent a couple to Brandon, they didn't make a story. It's her with her five kids hugging, huddling, loving, I mean, it's just the saddest thing you've ever seen. And then this, this therapist that, that got appointed, even when the kids didn't even need therapy, um, was, um, you know, was there. And, and uh, it was just the sickest, saddest thing. I think he did, I did connect with him that day. Um, so I have those photos, which have not been made public, because I gave them to Brandon, and he, I said, I'll, I'll give him you these, but I want them in the story, and he said, well, that's not my call. So I can send you those pictures that haven't been made public of her with her five kids at the Mall of America visit. That was the last time she saw them. Hello? Uh, I'm sorry, Michael, what did you say? No, I'm really sorry about that. You didn't see your kids since 2013. Okay.
February of 2013. Can you hang on just a minute? Um, well, I got to wrap this up because I got to take a call and, and get to work here. So, um. okay, how, how, okay, uh, I have to be okay, just, just platform-wise, how do we, how do we connect again? I mean, how does, um, uh, I didn't really get anything on the record and, and I got to start keeping it together here. Yeah. How can, what, uh, so how does this, Michelle, help me out here. What are you talking well, about? Well, we can, we, can, we can talk a little bit uh, later this afternoon, like late this afternoon, like 4. Why don't we just schedule something for 4, okay? I, I got to get something. Okay. Are you okay? And when, yeah, but the, the point is, is Brandon made your summit that I've called for block numbers. I'd like to point out, Michael, that my ex-husband has gone to numerous homes that I've tried to be at. And the reason that people ask me to block my numbers is for the protection of themselves, me, and their children. Okay. Okay, okay we, we got to hang up now. Sandra, call me later. i got to go. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye, Michael. Bye. Bye. What if anything would you like to tell me to the right sentence? Um, well, a fair trial includes the right to, to present a complete defense. I was made aware that I was also not provided with information on Christina Fox, all of the investigative data. Um, I completed a consent form that was given to Stearns County to have that released, and that was willfully refused to be provided to my husband. Um, so I, again, I didn't receive any of the preliminary audio statements on any of the witnesses, so I wasn't given the fair trial. 